This video is a part of Experience Scaler for Free initiative. To get full content, please visit the link given in the description below. The second approach that I have is, let's say I have an array, right? Like let's say the same array. I had, in fact, let me go with the original five, ten, three, two, eight. So five, ten, three, two, eight. And I put this in an array. Now what I know is that in the sorted array, the smallest number has to come at the beginning of the array. Do we all agree with that? Smallest number has to come at the beginning of the array, right? So one thing that I can do, which is not very optimal, but still works. So just every single time I look at what is the minimum in my given array. For example, if I run this loop, I'll figure out that two is the minimum. I say, okay, great. If two is the minimum, let me push two to the beginning of the array. So two comes here. And then I can just swap it with five. So five comes at the place of two. So when I do this, two comes here, five comes here. Now what I know is that now two is at the right position. I only have to sort the remaining four elements. And I repeat the process. I, for the remaining four elements, I again look for the minimum. Find three. So I swap 10 with three. And then I sort the last three elements. And then again, like I look for the minimum five, I put five here and then so forth, right? The only downside of this approach, while this approach works, the only downside is it is order of n square, no matter what the input. So in the best case, worst case, everything is order of n square. The good thing with insertion sort was that there is a case where the best case was order n. So therefore the average performance could have been better. If we do this, it is always order of n square. I mean, basically the steps were find minimum, Two is put in start of array and then start plus plus. That was the, the approach. If the array is already sorted, even then to find the minimum in the array, you'll have to look at all n elements. So every single time finding the element is taking you order n, right? So that approach is a precursor to bubble sort. So while this approach works, the question is, can we do something so that if the array is already sorted, then we don't have to go through all of the elements all over again. Right? Like every single time finding the minimum takes me a lot of time. How do we decide when to break? Check whether the array is already sorted or not. Let me maybe give some other case, right? So insertion sort will still be order N if let's say only one element was not in its right position. Every other element was in the right position. For example, if the array was, let's say one, two, three, four, zero. The array is just very simply some random elements. Bubble sort is a variation of exactly this. Bubble sort is, as the name suggests, it is like bubbling something to the top, right? So what you do is you compare all adjacent elements one by one. And wherever you have a pair of numbers. So what you do is, for example, let's say people are standing in, in some random order in the line, right? So for example, I have people standing as 5, 10, 3, 2, 8. Let me just write it like this, 5, 10, 3, 2, 8. My objective is somehow bubble this, the smallest number 2 to the top. So what I do is I say the last person standing in the line, hey, you compare yourself against the next person to you. You obviously know how to compare yourself against the next person. You can check your height versus the other person's height. Obviously, if you're standing behind and you're smaller, then you should swap yourself, right? So I say 8, look at 2. If you're smaller than two, then swap yourself. It says, I'm not smaller. Great. Then I said two. look at the next person ahead of you. If you're smaller than that, then swap. And I do see that two, two is smaller than three. So I swap. So three comes here, two comes here. Then I say two. swap yourself against the next person. If the next person is smaller, I figure out two is actually smaller than 10. Sure. I mean, should get swapped. So two comes here, 10 comes here. And then I again say two again. Compare yourself against five. If you're smaller, swap yourself. So two again gets compared with five. Five comes here, two comes here. So what has happened in this one order n loop? The smallest number has bubbled itself to the top of the array. This is why, I mean, because the smallest element is bubbling to the top, it is called bubble sort. Even this approach in the worst case will take order n square. There is one difference here though. If there are no swaps that happen, all throughout in this order n loop, then we just stop there, which means if the array was already sorted, then we would 
not do the next iteration. We'll keep doing the next iteration as long as there is swap happening. So let me elaborate again. What happens is, imagine you're standing in the line. I start from the last person. I say, compare yourself against the, your neighbor. You compare yourself against the neighbor. If you are smaller, then you swap yourself. And then you do that till the start of the array. One thing which is guaranteed in this loop, whatever is the smallest number will bubble up to the top of the array. Then you're left with sorting only the remaining part of the array. And you also know if there is any iteration where I went from the last person to the first person, there was no swap happening between the neighbors. Then I know that elements are already in the increasing order. I can just stop. I do the same process again. Now two, I don't care about. I already know two is in the right position for the remaining elements. So I again start from eight. I say eight, are you bigger than three? Eight will say, yes, I am. And I say three, are you bigger than 10? No, I'm not. So we'll swap. Three comes here, 10 comes here. Three, are you bigger than five? You're not. So sure, I mean, then let's again swap. So three comes here, five comes here. Again, if you see three has bubbled up to the top, which was the next smallest element. And then you're left with sorting only the last three elements. Any iteration where you don't have any swaps, your array is already sorted. You can just stop. Since we had one or more swaps in the first traversal, we'll start again from eight, but we'll not go till two. Two will be ignored. I mean, the first element is already sorted. So we'll be, you know, we'll stop here. Now that in the second iteration, we know that the first two elements are fixed. We'll start again from eight, but we will stop at after three. I mean, we'll not look at three and two anymore because we know that they are in the right position. Every single iteration, what is happening is the smallest element is bubbling to the top. And any single iteration, I know that there is no swap that has happened. I can just break. And therefore I do have a best case complexity, which is if the array was already sorted, I will do an order and iteration to figure out, are there any swaps? But post that order and iteration, I can just break. Or if I reach a stage where intermediary stage, where let's say I did these and then the remaining numbers were already sorted, then also I'll just break, right? So I'm not really spending time sorting if the array is already sorted. Does that make sense? Let me actually write the pseudo code for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So here is my inner loop, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to start from the last element. Let's say there is a J that starts from N minus one goes to imagine I'm doing a loop of I from zero to whatever. I'll, I'll tell you what zero to whatever is it goes to I imagine that like numbers till I are sorted right now that nothing is sorted. So N minus one to I, what I do is here I compare a of J with a of j minus one. Now I know that in the right order, a of j should be bigger. So if it is smaller, if there are two numbers where the second number is smaller, then obviously they should be swapped. The second number, if it is smaller, if this is smaller, then they should be swapped because they are not in the right order. So I just say swap a of j comma a of j minus one, right? By the end of this, a of i, will have the smallest element anyhow. I is starting from zero. A of I will have smallest element anyhow. I also keep track of one variable here. Has there any swap that has happened? Let's say there is a flag, which is initially zero. I just, whenever there is a swap that happens, I make flag as one. If at the end of it, if I see that flag is zero, then I just break, which means this element was already sorted. There is no need to look at other elements. And then I goes to from zero to N minus one. Yeah, sorry. This is I plus one. Correct. So again, like what is happening in the algorithm is the smallest element is bubbling to the top and you're just taking in the process, making sure that if the remaining elements are in the right place, there was no swap, then the element is all, I mean, array is already sorted. So let's just break. Yeah. I mean, actually we don't need the N minus one. When we come to N minus one, I plus one would anyhow, this J loop will not run. So I can just do N minus two. Again, let's, let's look at what is the best and worst case complexity of this algorithm. Best case is order N, which is my array was already sorted or almost sorted. And then, I mean, I do the situation flag becomes zero. I break and the worst case is when it is reverse sorted. So I, every single time I have to do all a lot of these swaps and it is actually order of N square. All right. So this is by the way, called bubble sort, find the smallest element move it to the beginning. This is called selection sort. In selection sort as well, you could be, it's what we were discussing where we were selecting the smallest element and moving it to the beginning of the array. That is selection sort. 
the reason why we are discussing this is these are intuitive ways of how we think about sorting and the technique can be can come into use later on let's do a dry run with with bubble sort just to see the best case right so imagine i asked you to sort this array 1 2 3 4 5 imagine this was my input correct maine kiya selection sort is sort of an greedy algorithm because what you're doing is you're saying that i know the smallest element should come at the beginning so let's find the smallest element you put it in the beginning and then you sort the remaining array let me however show like how the bubble sort is still best case order n i mean selection sort by the way we can also make order n in one case i'll also go over that selection sort just slight variation and it can become best case order n let's first look at how it becomes order n best case in bubble sort imagine this was your input right you start with i as 0 i is 0 j your flag is also 0 j basically goes from so you have your index 1 2 3 4 j will start with 4 and it will go till 1 4 till 1 and what do you do every single time you just compare a of j with a of j minus 1 so you here you check is 5 less than 4 the answer will be no so then you move on to the next j so from 4 you will go to 3 from 4 you will go to 3 then you compare 4 with 3 is 4 less than 3 no then you will compare 3 with the previous element which is 3 less than 2 no is 2 less than 1 no so at no point this if condition gets executed so there is no swap and therefore flag never be becomes equal to 1 so when this loop finishes when the j loop finishes you come to the point where flag is still zero and therefore you break so just after the first iteration with i zero you end up breaking because you figured out there was no swap involved in my array so my array is already sorted why why look at things again so that's why you get the best case as order n worst case is obviously n square now let's look at what is the case or like how do we make sure that even my selection sort which is like very greedy like can i modify it somehow so that that also becomes or best case order n let's see let's take some random input right so i had 5 3 8 4 6 6 now the way selection sort works is you go from the beginning you look at this you try to find the minimum element in the array this is the the approach just before bubble sort that i had talked about you try to find out the minimum element in the array in this case i find 3 as the minimum element and for this i to take an order n loop right in order n i find minimum of the array now if in this iteration only i would have figured out that the array is sorted in this order n if i figured out that the array is sorted which is all of ai is less than ai plus 1 then my work is done however if it is not then the smallest number that i found which is 3 i try to swap it with the previous element basically i i try to put it here and shift all of the remaining numbers one step to the right which means the array now becomes 3 here i have 5 8 Four, six. In fact, let me just change the array a little bit so that it becomes slightly better. Imagine if the array was four, five, six, eight. When I do the swap, then the array becomes, or when I push it here, then it becomes three comes to the beginning, and then I have four, five, six, eight. Now again, I know that at this point of time, three is at the right position. I still need to sort the remaining array. I'll again have to do an order of n minus one loop, this, 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 and this to figure out the minimum number. In this case, it is four as the minimum number. But by the way, in this order n minus one loop, I figured out the array is is already sorted, so I can therefore stop my process. The key thing to do here is when you find the minimum element, you don't just swap, but you shift the prefix of the array one step to the right create space for this new element and then you put it in the right place if you do that then i mean the selection sort also becomes best case order n one thing is i mean in most cases you will neither be using bubble sort or selection sort or insertion sort actually insertion sort may be in certain cases but most cases you will not be using these these are algorithms that that are good to think about the approach that we utilized here this might come into use later on in some or the other kind of context or in some or the other kind of problems but the sorting algorithm that is currently in use in most of the libraries that you use are either merge sort or quick sort quick sort is being the most popular one because it has better average performance does not use additional memory but those are the ones because they sort of perform in order of n log n time all of these are worst case order of n square average case is also order of n square almost java 8 array dot sort also uses quick sort 
but like bubble sort insertion sort three algorithms that i talked about they're good to know from their approach standpoint because there are some problems that might utilize this approach these are not necessarily the sorting algorithms you'll use in day to day sorting algorithms that you will use i'll talk about that in a few moments but just so that i again uh, complete my discussion on selection sort let me write the pseudo code for selection sort pseudo code is very simple right now if i have to sort imagine when i is 0 i need to sort everything from 0 to n right so what i do is i take this will go to some number i'll figure out what i'll take the loop from i to n i'll figure out the minimum uh, in fact let me actually also track its index i can just keep it as a of i and index is equal to i and this loop can run from i plus 1 so if let's say a of j is less than min 1 then minimum is equal to a of j index is equal to j here one of the other things which i also track is if a of j is greater than a of j plus 1 then there's a flag that i set to let's say one let's say there's a flag here which is also zero and once i have found my minimum then all i need to do is all of the other numbers they are shifting one space to the right so i again once i have found the minimum i will take a loop of j is equal to and then at the end you have a of i is equal to min 1 that is one way of shifting basically what i'm doing is if i have an array let's say i have 5 6 3 2 8 i'm going through once to figure out what is the minimum once i find the minimum i bring minimum to the front which is 2 comes here and then 5 6 3 i shift one space to the right and then i try only sorting this piece where every single time i have a flag to check is this piece already sorted or not if if at all at any point of time i find that there is a section of array that has already sorted then i just break out and and i'm done here i mean i could very well also have done instead of doing all of this i could have done swap a of i comma a of index i could have done this as well as long as i'm checking that for the remaining array is the array sorted or not if the array is sorted then i just break that is the only optimization that i put in nothing else if you like the video please do not forget to like comment and share this video with all your friends Also subscribe to our channel to get notified about the new upcoming videos.